Oh yeah, game did start. Okay, I'll start the third game while I'm at it. Let's go knight f3. But yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. Let's go bishop b5 here. Go bishop a4. Just play d3, move the bishop, move the knight. Okay, what do I want to do this game? Um, hmm. Now I can take the knight. I can also push. I can play knight c3 here. I don't want to do something that I might actually play in a real game, so I will play a4. Let's go knight c3, knight e2, or knight e5 here. Just take and castle. I have this position, actually. Speaking of Mexico, I had this position in Cuernavaca against um, Ruslan Ponomarev in 2000 and... I think it was 2004 or something. I think that's when it was. Um, in this tournament in Mexico against Ruslan, where I was, I, I was black and he was white. I drew the game very easily, um, but but we had this opening, this archangel, where I put the pawns on d3. Okay, Isa Muja. Okay, goodbye, dude. Goodbye. Okay, let's just play h3 here. I can take, remove the knight. Let's take the pawn, push the knight up here. Takes. So I just take and push the pawn to e4. But what I would say in general is any game that is beyond 30 moves, um, if, if your rating is, is, is below probably like 2,400, you're not going to play perfectly. And that guy played perfectly the whole game. It can happen in over shorter ranges too. Like as you guys saw with the XUC game where he played against, um, he played against, was it Yasuo? He had like 99% accuracy, but that game was only, that game was only 10, 10 moves. So like the shorter the game gets, the more per the higher the percentages of somebody playing playing perfectly. But as the game gets longer and longer, you, you're it's it becomes a lot harder. So I'm gonna trade no um trade the rooks here, play queen b3, or rook b1, or rook actually rook c1 looks pretty standard here. I can just take the pawn. Exchange French, anyone can play 90%. That's reasonably true, probably. Probably, but it, it depends. It depends on how many moves the game is. Like, I bet if you look on average, let's go here. I can take and bring the queen in. This looks pretty good. Okay, let's see. So if I take, I just take and go knight of five, I think. What is the di difference? Or 3,000, 2,000? A uh, bigger gap should be about the same, honestly. I don't know what the bigger gap is, really. It should be about the same, though. Okay, now if I go here, he goes here, and then I take, and then he moves the king here, and I play rookie one. So I think this is good, because I can still capture and go rookie one to hit the knight if he comes in. If he goes here, I still have g3 to remove the knight. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what the difference is. I would guess the bigger difference should be between 2,000 and 1,000, though, because there's a bigger base of knowledge if your rating is... Uh, if your rating is 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 uh, two thousand, you're you have such a bigger base than a one thousand player. So so I would say in general the bigger gap should be between two thousand and one thousand and two thousand and three thousand. Thank you to Triple Timer for the prime. Thank you to J God Salmon for the prime. Thank you to Jin for the prime. Uh, thank you to Kakarum for the prime as well. Okay, so if I go here, he goes here. I go here, takes. I just take. This should be good. So I hit the pawn. Important not to blunder this uh, this discovered check on my king here. If he goes here, I go here. If he takes. I guess I take. If he takes, I take. Still have knight of five lurking. Still have d4 lurking. Should be good. And the guy, yeah, I mean, the guy also used a lot of time. So that's the other reason. I mean, that's the other thing. As I've said, and, and by the way, to be very clear, chat, this is the one, th one issue in chess. That I think does keep it from becoming becoming much bigger is this is that you do have this issue with computers being so strong at the game that, that it does affect um, it kind of does affect certain things and to be clear chat it, 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 when you say you might have been having a good game there still would have been there still would have been an act there still would have been actual mistakes in the game is what I would say so I can take and take 
If I take, he takes back. I take back, he takes back. I have nothing. He takes with the king. I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to think. So I'm going to take. Okay, I'm going to take here and go knight f5 next move. Takes with the queen. Okay, I go here. I'm threatening checkmate. Oh wait, what was it? sorry, what's that? Um one second, I'm trying to one second. Sorry, give me a second. One second. So if I take takes, takes, he takes, and I don't have a way to win. No, then I go here. King H8. I don't have a good way to win that. Wow, okay, I guess I just take and go Queen E1 then. This should be winning for me, I think. Unless I just blundered. Okay, he blo he had rook c1, which I think was holding for him, maybe. Okay, so now I can take and make a check, I think. Yeah, I take and I go check. I hit the king and then I fossil the queen. So, okay. And just to give you guys an, an analysis, like you'll you'll see here, I bet even my I bet even my game was not was not perfect, because it does it, this one did not feel perfect at all to me. So let's take a quick look at this game. Like, I bet my percentage in this game, even though I won, is like something like 85 to 90%. Mm hmm. There are a lot of online tools for learning about opening. Say to Mary JTV for the tier one. Yeah, but it's, it's the base of knowledge is much higher though. That, that's what I would say. Um, yeah, see like, and, and, and again, see, see, you'll see like, this is kind of the point. Like this is probably a good game objectively by both of us, but you'll see like this guy makes five inaccuracies and has one mistake and one blunder. I have one inaccuracy, but I do have a clear mistake. And even someone like me made, made mistakes. And no, 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 Chad. I'm not. This guy didn't. The, the point is that I'm looking. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the overall spread of, of the moves here. But you'll see, like this guy, five inaccuracies, one mistake, and one blunder. So he has a mistake and he has a clear blunder. I even have a clear mistake as well. So the fact that you see like clear mistakes from both of us, like it, it, it says quite a bit. No, ninety percent is fine. It's it's fine. Um, but 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 the point is there are mistakes. There are a lot of mistakes by us both in this game. So, okay, let's get back here. Let's get back to the game. Um, next game coming up. Is it not possible to play a game without a mistake? Uh, no, it certainly is. But but when you have more and more, more and more moves in, in a blitz game, it's just, it becomes borderline impossible. Thank you to Autozilla for the Prime. Thank you so much. Thank you to Scuff Kiwi for the 100 bits. Thank you to um, uh, thank you to Dark Freud for the Prime as well. Thank you to Triple Timer. Thank, thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate all the love and support. Is If a title player is caught cheating, is there any consequence? I mean, there I think there are consequences, but the, but the thing with chess is that it's always been very, very light kind of in the way of punishments. Um, just one of those things that like that just ha you know it's one of those things it's just it's just an issue if i had only two mistakes i was having a great chess player yeah yeah okay let's let's see it was this guy right um one second Wait, that's not what I meant to click on. Whoops. One second. Sorry, you guys. Okay, let, let me let me see this guy's games again. Let me take one more look at this. 
Okay, chat. So I I mean, I don't even need to show this, but look at look at this look at this accuracy. <laughs> 77.4%. So basically it's a 92.7 in round one and a 96.1 in round two, and he goes to 77.4 in round three. Um, I, I mean, like, okay, let's just play D5 here. I'll play Knight F6 next move or G6 and Bishop G7. But a 96 versus me, yeah, I mean, 97 and d4 okay plays h4 interesting move so i'm gonna go h6 h5 i play g5 i can develop my bishop i don't know if i like this pawn push because it weakens the king side here for white let's go d4 probably c5 again because white has exposed this queen this king side with this pawn push i should be doing very well here because now if he goes here i can maybe attack okay I'll go here and probably just go for the quick attack on the on the on the queen side. Let's go here and take. I don't actually understand what you're saying, to be quite honest. It's a little bit dank, but. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, yeah, it's okay. Let's, let's just go back here. It's got the loose queen here in the center of the board. Um, can maybe push this pawn and hit this. If he moves the queen, then I get to castle. Cause right now he's stopping me. I think B5 looks, B5 looks strong. F5 looks strong. I think I'm just going to play queen D7 and, and just go for the king side expansion though, because he can't really do anything with the central pawn mass and I can push the pawn, activate the knight, hit everything here. Uh, from all the different squares. Okay, now I think I just... Okay, I don't... I can also even do this maybe to attack, but F5 looks very juicy. But F5, Knight G1... Hmm. No, I think I'm just going to play... This looks strong. See, capture, I go here and I discover him. I mean, if he moves... He doesn't really have oxygen. His knights are kind of stuck here in the middle part of the board, so it's a very tough position for white to play. Won't the fair play team restore at the break? I don't know how the fair play team works exactly, so I, I can't really comment on that. It's King G1. So now I go F6 to solidify my pawn chain. I'm probably going to play D3 or B4 at some point. I don't know what I'm doing, but I should be much better here. It goes A4, so I'm just going to go B4. Now I'm threatening to trap his knight because his knight will have no access points. His knight is just stuck. Pawn guards this. My other pawns guard all the other central squares. So I'm going to be winning a knight here. Um, which one do I... I guess I take with this one and go here, maybe. Yeah, this looks pretty good. And I just take... Okay, f5. I probably just trade... No, don't sack. What am I doing? I should just be winning here. For some reason, I've made made this into a bit of a mess here. I'm still just much better, but I don't really like what I've done. I also go... I think I just go here. Try to exchange. One thing you want to do is when you're ahead by material, you want to uh, trade down. If I didn't play chess, I would probably... I don't know what I would do. I, 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 I don't know what I would do if I didn't play chess. A Valorant Pro, yeah. <laughs> I should not be two slash four. I should be on three slash two slash three or something. I don't even know what it, what it says exactly. Um, I think I push this pawn here, activate my bishop. Don't allow him any kind of weird checks. But I have made this kind of weirdly messy. I guess I'll go here. Maybe just swing over. I don't really like what I've done in this game. I would not be a broker, no. I mean, I, I, since I was watching Mizkif for, for a few minutes last night, like, I would not ever want to be a broker. That would be, um, being a broker, doing anything along those lines would just be painful. Now, if I go here, he takes. I've really messed this up somehow. I don't even understand what I've done, really. 
guess I'll just go here and guard the pawn and move my bishop around to capture the pawn here. But this is a pawn, I think, so I can still go check if he blocks. Because otherwise I lose the bishop from the rook, but it's a check, so it's winning. Now I just drop the bishop back. Oh, this is, oh this is Jose Herrera, the streamer. Oh, I didn't realize that actually. That, that actually big big shout out to him. I, I didn't realize that's who this was right off. Um, the FM's accuracy in the three games before the tournament were seventy one percent, fifty one percent, sixty seven percent, and then he has a ninety two and a ninety six. <laughs> yeah, I mean whatever, whatever. It's like it's it's not shocking. It's really just not shocking at this point. Let's go H3 here. Go check, and I go check, and I go check. Or actually, it's just I guess he can block or something, but it's it's just over. Um, okay, so win again. Um, yeah. No, but the, the the real problem with when this happens, I mean, the big issue with this happening is that basically what you end up with is you end up in a spot where um, the FM also only played against people from v Vietnam before the tournament. The, pro the problem with this is that what happens is when this occurs, the player who, who player who, who basically ends up losing the game, whether it's me, whether it's like Nepo or whomever, or Grishuk or whatever, like we don't end up getting refunded the point. So it's like theoretically, if I get weaker opponents and I then then I win every game, it, there's like I still end up getting screwed at the end of the day. So it's uh, it's one of those things. Did I see Nepo left the time running without resign? Speaking of Nepo, I don't know. I, I haven't been following the event honestly today. Um, Beard is slowly coming back, yeah. Yeah, I also cut my hair a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I, I cut my hair a little bit on my own. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Um, thank you to Ollie for the 20 bucks. Thank you. Gary went for a perpetual check when he was up 15 points. Seriously? Wait, really? Wait, are you serious, chat? Wait, did Anish make a draw in a position where he's plus 15? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm going to watch that quickly. I think I have time before the next round. So let, let me let me let me watch that clip. Uh-oh. Oh, but oh, but you guys aren't talking about this position. You're talking about this one down here. Yeah, Anish is just winning, right? Anish is completely winning. Did Anish make a repetition in this bottom board here? Did he make some repetition? Like King B1, Rook A1, Rook A2 or something? Wait, no, I mean, he didn't, he didn't really do that, did he? Okay, I'm go I, I've got to close this. I'm ah, oi, 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 oi. Wow. What to say? I, I don't even know what to say. Wow. Thank you to uh, Ominix for the Prime. Thank you to Contra Ambulance for the Prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you to Long John HG for the Prime. Thank you to Mark and M Martin Meltris for the Prime. And thank you to Wizard Painter for the sub months as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to say. I don't even know who qualified in the tournament anyway. But yeah, that's 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 not so good. 
yeah anyway all right so four rounds in the book uh six more to go top eight he's oh Anish said later that he had to use the restroom wait did Anish really say that he said he had to take the drugs he needed to use the restroom <laughs> okay um okay um do I have any opinions on the wreckful situation what uh what wreckful situation did I missed something did I miss something what happened with Byron oh sorry I'm on the wrong screen sorry you guys um sorry about that okay um Byron was accused of sexual assault what no I mean you guys are trolling you guys are trolling you guys are trolling I think you guys are trolling you guys are trolling I'm not gonna answer that I think you guys are trolling you're you're all trolling so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you're trolling Okay, so um, all right. So next, next, next team should be coming up um, in a second. Or actually, maybe after round four, there's a break. But yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. You guys, not going to talk about it. Not going to talk about any of that. They do Cladex bear for the two months. I live an alternative lifestyle. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Did I see, I mean, you guys keep talking about a lot of Twitter stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of Twitter stuff. You're talking about Byron, you're talking about uh, about um, Nepo, like a bunch of bunch of tweets. I, I actually don't go on Twitter that much. I, I'm more of a Discord kind of guy. So um, 13K subs, a goatee. I don't know. I would not be a good math teacher, you guys, because I, I like, I, I would have flunked, um, I would have flunked, uh, I would have flunked calculus if I'd done it. So no, I'm, I'm, I would not be a good math teacher, you guys. Um, yeah. I'm a math teacher. Yeah, math just isn't my thing. I've never, I've never loved math. I've been like more, so like a lot of chess players actually they fall into one of like a couple of categories. Um, like chess players are either like math geniuses, they're like the math science, the, the CS kind of people. Um, that's one type of chess player, and the other type of chess player are like the like the historian, not not historian, like history, like like the history, um, like the history lit literature kind of like. Um, the, and languages like history languages and like literature some combo of those sorts of things um is like the other group of uh of, of, of chess players what am i i'm not i'm not a i'm, I'm not a uh i'm not i'm not i'm not good at math so i'm the second player are there no creative chess players like architects um can't think of any famous architects who were who, who played chess I'm sure some did but not not a competitive level did nerves ever impact you early on in your career I mean I still get nervous sometimes during tournaments like if you're in the last round of a game I, I do get nervous ever art Vandalay exactly art Vandalay yeah yeah exactly I'll stop the music for a second um but but yeah anyway um no, but like I, I would make the argument, you guys, like it was like, De it's like I did this thing with Devin Nash the other day and he also was the same way. It's like he likes analytics, but he's not, um, he likes analytics, but he's not big on math. Like the, the math that's required for that sort of stuff is not super, uh, it, it's, it's a different, it's that's just like practical math, which is, which is great. I love practical math. I mean, it was good enough for the Romans 2000 years ago. It's good enough now, as long as you know, basic concepts like compounding and so forth, that's, that's all you need to know. Thank you, Brandon Evans, for the 300 bits. Thank you.
One plus one equals four, right? Yeah. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah. I've never been to Portugal. No, I, I like I, three minus one equals two equals zero. Right. Yeah. No, I dropped out of college because I, I think like the whole construct is, is honestly bullshit. Part of my French, but that's what, that's how I feel about it. Um, Yeah, so like basically if you guys are asking why I say that, I'll tell you why. I think like the whole notion like in the West especially, like it's this thing like in high school and college, it's the same way. It's like basically the, the way that you're judged is you're judged based on like what year you're in a school. So like if you're, you know, if you're if you're a junior or senior in high school or college, then it's like you, you run the roost, you're like you're more important. Like the whole clickish thing is um, it's just very, I don't know, it's just it's just not not my thing. So, um, so, so yeah. Cause like when you, when you play, like, you know, it's like if I play a game of chess, for example, I, I play a game of chess. Like I, I don't really care. You could be, you could be 40 years old, like Peter Savidler. You could also be like 16 years old, like, um, Ali Reza. But like, so if I play Ali Reza, you know, it, it really doesn't matter if he's like 16 years old or he's 20 or 40 or whatever age he is. Like there's a level of respect that you have for, um, for people, no matter what. And like, when you talk about school, like the fact that you have 16, 17, you guys get the point. But, um, but when you talk about something like, you know, going to high school or college, it's like the only thing that matters is like, you know, what, what year you're in a school and that makes you like more important or like superior to everybody else. So honestly, like that's just absolute, absolute, you know, bullshit. Like I said before. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the big reasons though, that I dropped out is cause it's just like, I, I went, I went to college and it's like, you don't get judged based on merit. You get judged based on like what year, what year you're in, which is just stupid. 